Hello and welcome to part two or episode two of the series on COVID 2019. 2019 has been all over the world too quick. It's almost like something we've never seen before. For something to spread so quickly around the entire globe, it's almost as if this bug had superpowers or somehow it got from where it was first created or born to go all around the world so quickly. This is very, very frightening because it's almost like someone bugged the air. But whatever's happened now, we've actually got this thing in society. So this thing called COVID-219, I'm calling it 219 for special reasons. I'm going to call it number 11. And I'm going to go into, that, into the very next uh, film clip after this one. So what happens is that somebody anywhere could be sneezing or coughing or have goop on their hands of some sort that's very, very, uh, you wouldn't know you've got it. And you're walking along a handrail, for example, and somebody who's innocent behind walks into an atmosphere where somebody has sneezed. They say two metres from people. I'd rather see eight to ten metres because the sneeze really, really goes far and wide. I don't know how long it can live in the atmosphere. I know, I believe it can live on stainless steel for more than a day, maybe two days. However, you walk along with that, touched it, you pick it up, you just all you need to do is rub your eye, scratch your nose or mouth or anything like that and it can go in because you have glands, uh, you've got um, oh, all, all the drains and things, your sinus glands etc up above the eyes, up around here and it all goes into and down the throat. So uh, this represents your lungs which uh, you probably recognised and the spotty airborne virus goes in and gets sucked down when you take a deep breath. So it goes inside the body and inside all the alveoli, these tiny little uh, bubbles as if you had a big sponge uh, and it, you squeeze the sponge and you open it up and it pushes the air out and pulls the air in. That's what your lungs do. And when you squeeze the, the lungs like that, you're pushing out carbon dioxide and when you open them up, it's pulling in the oxygen. And that exchange takes place in, in, a, in single cells here where you've got the blood going through a blood vessel and your oxygen comes in to the blood vessel and out as goes the carbon dioxide for release to come back out here. That's the way it's supposed to work. COVID goes in, gets mature inside the trachea, goes down inside the lung, nestles in, starts to take hold, develops larger ones inside the cells creates them, drops in its DNA, there's its DNA, or in fact it's RNA, which is uh, half your DNA strand, and it starts to alter the structure of cells and kills them. Once the cell is dead, the body is going to try and get rid of that. That's called debris. It's like dust rubbish on the floor of the lung, which is all over the walls of the lung. And as it's happening, Things such as you've got uh, fluids going into your lungs, you've got uh, mucus developing in there, which is all the debris. All the uh, body is trying to do is to get rid of it and kill it. So, between this particular area here, I'll call it in a colour, there, there is basically two layers in here. This gets blocked up. Fluids develop. Fluids get caught up. Because of gravity, when you're standing up here, they build up in the lung. Now when they do this, what you've got inside here is pneumonia. The debris goes hard, your body can't get rid of it. You're, you're basically a, like a sponge that you dip into hot butter, where it's all like greasy and oily, and you can still squeeze it. But once that butter starts to cool, it goes hard. You cannot any longer squeeze that sponge to get it out. That's what's happening inside here. And people die. People die who are not physically in good condition. And it's been known in America, 60% of their population is obese. So that puts those people at risk. People who smoke and smoke heavily, or smoke anyway, have already got coatings of, uh, on their lung, which looks like dark matter, it's tar. That's already prohibiting the intake and exhalation of oxygen. and carbon dioxide respectively. 
So if you've got problems like that, you're literally inviting this thing into your lungs to get in, to take over, to kill you. You can, using apple cider vinegar, using a, hot, a basin full of hot water above 37 degrees, so you want something that's really about 60 or 70 degrees, boiling water, put it in there, put in some apple cider vinegar, and the vapors will be quite stinging. But the good point about it is, if you were to get a, a like a towel, and you, you put it over your head, so you've got a, like a tent, and you cover the bowl, put your head underneath it, so that you are inhaling strongly the vapor from this. It literally is quite caustic to it. Using a mouthwash uh, made of uh, little salt, gargle and spit it out. You can even gargle with uh, apple cider vinegar and you can actually swallow that. Whatever goes down into your intestines or your stomach will be destroyed by your stomach acids. That's fine. But breathing it in is where the problem is. Do small things like this to help you. Stay away from other people. They don't mean to give it to you. They just basically exhale it and you've got it when they cough or sneeze and touch things after they've touched their mouth. So, it's your eyes, nose and mouth that will take it in, gets in here, develops, kills the cell, produces spore off that and lets them go out into the world to screw up other people's lives. Now, there's investigation going on to how this happened, where it came from, etc. But that's for later. Right now it's protecting us and keeping everybody isolated as much as possible. There's a window of time that if you stop the, with the door shut, the bug can't get through to other people. And these people will then either get over it, get sick, go to hospital, potentially die. But the bug stops there. And these people on this side who are isolating themselves will in fact have a better chance. Now, my next video clip uh, which is, uh, you can get hold of me on silverfox at 111webnet.com and this particular bug, COVID-219, because of the study I've done over 40 years, I've discovered something that nobody else has really cottoned on to yet. And I'm going to be explaining that in the next video. And in there, I'm going to show you how I can help a person identify a period where as they're walking through they might come across danger areas and then get clear. Once you know where a danger area is before you get there, you can literally go around it and carry on. I'm able to do this. I've done this for a long time and I've already helped people who would otherwise now be trapped in America. I uh, talked about that I think in the earlier video, but those people would otherwise be there, captured, spend a lot of money going over for different reasons, but because they've been my clients in the past, they asked me if they could go, I warned them no, and this was well before we had a major problem developing. They'd still be there, and I'm not very happy. So helping people like that avoid this thing is something that I like doing for others to help them out. I do have, in fact, a, a, a means to do it. I, I uh, consult with people. I spend up to two hours consulting with them, but I've condensed it down. So if you need to know about you, and I can identify where this particular virus is around you, that you can avoid it at the right time. Because otherwise, you'll capture it when you are in a condition that allows the attraction of this bug into your life. And when you see how this works, and I can prove it, because I can tell you about things in your past without ever having met you before, just with your name and birth date, because I've understood how the brain works. And I do, in fact, teach uh, to people the functioning of the neuron cells in the brain, how things operate. My background is, is a military electrical, because I'm an electrician by trade. I've been an ambulance officer uh, during the course of my career in power stations and places like that and a soil scientist. So I have a great technical background and for 40 years what was a hobby has now become a full-time profession. I've done over 280,000 case studies over 40 years. Join the field with people. If you want to know this, I'm doing for $40 US 20 minutes with me on, on uh, Skype or on some other means that we can chat to anywhere in the world 
and I will tell you where you're at with, this, with the situation. We can take it further if you want to, but please, for your sake, stay away from people who may be a problem and they may have been there before you even entered the area. Trust nothing, trust nobody. Stick to your nest, let's see what unfolds and see how I can help you. Thanks for watching and tune in for the next one, which is going to be on how do I do this. I think you're going to find that a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, it's put me on television a few times and my predictions are about 98% accurate. So let's see how we can go with you. So Peter Vaughan signing off. Get hold of me there. I'll take your uh, email and I'll fire you back information and we can get on with the job of helping you out. Thanks again. Take care.